Did an Italian army serve in the Normandy campaign of 1944? Bit of a strange question, surely. But the answer is yes, but not alongside the Germans, but rather alongside the Americans. That's right. The Americans had a huge Italian army standing alongside of it in France, and incredibly, another equally large one in Italy, and before that, another in North Africa. This is the story of the Italian service units, the former enemies of the Western Allies that became an absolutely vital component to eventual Allied victory over Germany. Their story has been almost completely written out of the Normandy campaign and the advance into Germany, though the force was forty thousand strong. The roots of this extraordinary story go back to September 1943. Italy, under dictator Benito Mussolini, had joined the war on Germany's side in 1940, just before the fall of France, hoping to snatch a few of the victory laurels from Hitler. Woefully unprepared for total war, the antiquated Italian army suffered a series of humiliating defeats at the hands of the British Empire in East and North Africa in 1940 to 41, and in Greece in 1941. Requiring German help to prevent a complete Italian collapse. In North Africa, in 1942 to 43, further defeats followed at the hands of the British Empire and the newly arrived Americans, resulting in tens of thousands more Italians joining their comrades as prisoners of war. Following the Anglo-American invasion of Sicily in July 1943, Mussolini's own fascist party turned on its leader, and he was dismissed from power and imprisoned by the king. Then, in September, the Italians suddenly changed sides, joining the Allies. But even before the armistice. The process of using the tens of thousands of Italian POWs held in North Africa and elsewhere began in earnest. Although the U.S. was no longer at war with Italy, it was not possible to ship the Italian POWs back to Italy. Nor was it desirable, as many Italian soldiers had remained loyal to Mussolini. The Germans subsequently rescued Mussolini from captivity, and Hitler created a puppet state for him in the north of the country, called the Italian Social Republic. The fear was that some of the Italian POWs, certainly a minority if freed, might join the Mussolini's new armed forces in the north. In the POW camps, many senior Italian officers who had no love for Mussolini petitioned the Americans to allow them and their men a role in defeating Germany. After much deliberation, the U.S. decided to form suitable Italian POWs into special units that could support U.S. operations. The Allies were always short of men, and Italian support would be a welcome additional source of manpower. Starting in October 1943, North African Theatre of Operations began organizing Italian POWs into service units. They created labor companies of 250 men each. Although a U.S. officer commanded each company, the rest of the officers and NCOs were Italians, responsible for the administration and discipline of their men. Prisoners were not extensively screened, as the demand for labor was so high. U.S. authorities simply interviewed one or two Italian officers for each unit, and if satisfied, placed them in command. Each Italian POW read and verbally agreed with a declaration saying that he would fully cooperate with the Allies in furthering the war effort. However, many Italians actually volunteered for work even before Italy capitulated. In North Africa, organization of service units was placed in the hands of two captured Italian generals, who were anti-Mussolini and anti-German. The Italian service units, or ISUs, performed any work desired by U.S. base commanders under minimal supervision. Special cards showing a prisoner's skills being kept on each man. The Italians wore U.S. Army uniforms with a large oval patch worn on the left shoulder that read Italy, and on the overseas cap a smaller version of the Italy patch. On active service, they were issued with U.S. Army M1 helmets and field equipment. 
Italian officers wore their original rank badges from their old uniforms on their cuffs when in dress uniform. In this photograph of ISU officers relaxing at a party, you can see the officer in the front right still wears his original Italian rank insignia on the sleeve cuffs. Generally, members of the ISUs worked six-day weeks, ten hours a day, under the same conditions as U.S. troops. They received modified U.S. rations, with more starch, more palatable to Italians. They were also permitted leave passes and special privileges. As the war progressed to the Italian mainland, the ISUs followed U.S. forces, receiving technical training and assignments to specialized branches of the U.S. Army. For example, a motor school trained ISUs to maintain U.S. military vehicles. At Bari in Italy, the U.S. trained some ISUs as military police, as the U.S. Army was short of MPs. After three months training, these Italian POWs were sent to guard German POW camps. The Italians were paid 80 cents a day for their labor. They also received a 10 cents per day personal allowance, all paid for by a special fund from the U.S. Treasury in Washington. Members of ISUs were bound by the Articles of War, and Italian officers could punish their men up to and including seven days of restrictions. More serious crimes could be dealt with by U.S. military courts. So, what jobs did ISUs perform? They labored as stevedores, loading and unloading ships. Were quartermaster depot units, laundry and bakery units, ordnance and vehicle maintenance units, signals construction units, and so on. Many of these units were highly valued by U.S. commanders. One unit even worked as bomb disposal experts. The numbers of Italian POWs in the ISU units were staggering. During Operation Dragoon, the Allied invasion of southern France in August 1944, twenty-eight thousand Italians landed in support of the invasion in two hundred and fifty-man ISUs. In preparation for the invasion of Normandy, ISUs were sent to Britain. They were sent there to relieve a chronic shortage of labor amongst U.S. troops. Some five to seven thousand Italian POWs in ISUs were in England performing the usual tasks. Freeing up American servicemen, they proved much more useful than labor units recruited from local prisoner of war camps, as they did not require constant supervision or guarding. But they were also kept away from ordinary POWs. Most of these units moved over to France once the Normandy beachhead was established and the push east began in earnest, working well behind the American lines. Again, the numbers of Italians supporting Allied forces in France and later Germany is impressive. By the 31st of May 1945, there were 228 Italian service units, consisting of 39,137 men. Unlike German POW labor units, the ISUs had no American guards, and their presence released tens of thousands of U.S. Army personnel for service at the front. The ISUs worked as engineer construction companies, depot companies, forestry companies, in medical sanitation, ordnance evacuation, quartermaster laundry, bakery, salvage and gas supply companies, staging area companies, port maintenance and boiler and blacksmith companies, to name just a few. Italian units entered Germany in January 1945 behind U.S. forces. And care was taken to ensure that no ISUs were captured by the Germans. So invaluable were the Italian units that in April 1945, General Eisenhower, the Supreme Allied Commander, requested that they be retained in Germany for a year after the war. However, many ISUs were repatriated to Italy from August 1945, as huge amounts of German prisoner of war labor became available. A further forty thousand Italians served in ISUs in the mainland United States, again helping to free up American personnel for deployment to Europe and the Pacific. And it's no surprise to learn that many stayed on after the war, marrying local girls and becoming U.S. citizens. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share. You can also visit my new audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. Details in the description box. 
You might also consider supporting both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details again in the description box below.